excited for this one, so I'll have to be quick. Hello everyone and welcome to another Fight of the Night review. This is for the Fight of the Night UFC 270 last night at the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. And it was the third fight, and quite possibly not the final one, between uh, reigning flyweight champion Brandon Moreno and Davis and Figueredo. Now, they're 1-1-1. One, one, one. Their first fight was a draw, their second fight Brandon won and became the new champ. And this one, well... I'm going to tell you by the end of it as I try and break down the entire thing, round by round, a full five, and I'm really looking forward to doing this one, so let's go. As always, we begin with the first and first dull round, and there is very much a feeling out process at first. There is an accidental clash of heads which does spark some excitement. People think, uh, the crowd does start to think that um, Brandon actually landed a right on Davison, which he didn't, and then um, it sort of gets fairly slow really quick, if I'm being honest. Brandon... Um, does manage to catch a leg kick and does sort of get a clinch uh, against Davison against the cage. Davison manages to turn it around, so he's got the clinch and a, a fair bit of time passes by. There's not much, much action happening and I'm baffled as to why the referee didn't stop it, but Brandon was able to eventually pull away and, well, push Davison away and get the fight back to where it should be. And Davison landed a lot of really good shots. He was throwing amazing leg kicks. Brandon was landing a good, uh, good couple of his own, but he wasn't really able to find his distance that well. And Figueredo did land some really good right hands as well. And I think he even got a takedown in round one at some point as well. So, yeah, round one, uh, I know I haven't really mentioned a lot of it, but it, there wasn't a great deal that happened in round one besides those things, except for the leg kicks and the punches. And, uh, you know, I already explained it. Round one, fairly close, um, but I give it to Davison... Like, very narrowly, he does come away with a bit more. He does land a bit more as well. His leg kicks, again, there for him all day. He does open with some really good shots as well. And the takedown definitely helped. Um, I think he got two. I could be wrong about that. I think it was just the one. Then again, the transition he got to get it was really good because, like, it was a normal shoot. Then uh, Brandon tried to counter it, and Davison took Brandon's back and then managed to trip him with that. He wasn't on the ground long, though. But, yeah, round one uh, goes to Figueredo, in my opinion. Very close, but he... Was uh, he was the smarter man in round one? We then get to round two, and immediately um, Brandon, or Mr. Davison, Brandon is actually starting to catch on to more of Davison's game plan. He is throwing some like kicks of his own to counter Davison's, which are still devastating as hell in round two, and he is landing a lot more. He's countering the takedowns and breaking away with some really good clean left hooks in uh, as he escapes out of the clinch, and he is. There is a moment, I think it's in round one or two, where he's, like, tripped with a leg kick, but as he sort of falls, he lands a really good overhand right, which does stun Figueredo for a little bit. And speaking of stunning for, uh, Figueredo, uh, <laughs> Brandon does manage to do that a fair amount in round two. He's landing some really good uh, body hits, especially with the body hooks. Um, not throwing a lot of body kicks, uh, just mostly focused on the legs. And he is throwing some really good stuff, countering the takedowns again, really managing to, uh, managing to escape from the clinch nice and cleanly. And landing the left hook each time at breakaway. He does stun Davison with a good couple of shots. Um... And there was a great moment near the end of round two as well where uh, Brandon goes for a head kick and misses and then on the counter Davison goes for a head kick and misses and they both smile and shrug at each other. And by the way, I will spoil that for this for this fight. These two are just having so much fun. Like, it is their third fight and so we're used to seeing them have fun, but god damn it, they just look like they're both having the time of their life. So, yeah, actually I, sh I should talk about round two. Round two goes to Brandon. He was a lot smart with the defense. He was landing a lot more. Uh, Figueredo was not landing as well as he was in round one. But, uh, yeah, Brandon was definitely landing a happy clip. He did get a good couple of stuns, not any major ones. I think he did get tripped with a leg kick, though, but that was, like, the only major trouble he was in. Defended the takedowns well, defended a lot of the other leg kicks quite well. Uh, really good uh, stand switches as well, and good body work. So yeah, round two goes to Brandon, in my opinion. Then get to round three, and um, it is definitely where the action starts to pick up a little bit more. Brandon is uh, countering some really good stuff. I think there's a point where he lands like a spinning back kick to the leg, which is not something you see. You, you, usually you see it to the body, usually you see it to the head. Brandon goes for one to the leg. I think that might have been in round two as well. I could, have be, I could be wrong about that. But I do remember that being one. I think he might have gone for one in round three and I might have missed. I don't really know. That is my cat. Say hi to him. And yeah, uh, Brandon is um, landing a hell of a lot more. Uh, not as many takedown turns from Davison. I think he's sort of like trying to keep it on reserve. He's focused more on his striking in round three. And Brandon is cantering a lot. Brandon is definitely like doubling up on his striking as well. There's a great moment where he lands a left hook and it does stun 
Davison. Davison sort of counters, uh, well, sort of matches it with the left uppercut. Doesn't land super heavy, but yeah, round three is pretty much all Brandon. Uh, he, if, except for the end, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But yeah, Brandon, uh, really good landing, uh, managing to check more of the leg kicks, throwing a lot of the body, uh, just throwing a really, really good amount of strikes to the head as well. And he's sort of almost got it. Bre uh, Davison is a very tough dude. Like, he's, you know, he's only been finished one to, once, which was in the last fight that these two had when uh, Brandon beat him by submission. But Davison can eat a fucking punch, and he ate a lot in round three. And as round three was reaching its last, like, six seconds, Davison uncorks with a massive right hand. That knocks Brandon down. There's not really many seconds to uh, follow up with anything, and Davison even goes for a guillotine. And after, you know, the horn sounds because Brandon wasn't in the guillotine long and the round was ending anyway. As the horn sounds, Davison pushes Brandon away, which I am bringing up for a reason, which I'll get to at the end of round four. But back to round three. Despite the big shot that Brandon la uh, that Davison landed near the end of the round, and the pretty good clinch work he did have at the start of the round, which I forgot to mention, the entirety of the in-between was like a, sort of like a sandwich, you know, Davison's... First and last minutes with the bread, and Brandon was like the filling in between, uh, landing some really good stuff. And I give round three to Brandon, is the point I'm trying to make. Uh, land outlanded Davidson quite a lot. Um, was caught off guard slightly with the takedown near the start, but yeah, managed to bounce back really well. And despite getting clipped at the end with that massive right, I definitely think he did enough uh, in the three minutes between to win round three. So it's 2 2. Uh, Brandon and one to Davison. Next we go to round four and Davison is a bit more aware in this one. Like obviously, you know, the two have been having fun and uh, they've been like, you know, shrugging a lot of things off, but Davison is a bit more focused in round four. He does start coming out with some heavier shots. He lands a lot more leg kicks. He's starting to form lumps and welts on Brandon's left lead leg. And he, yeah, he's um, going for some really good clinch stuff, and he's starting to rock Brandon with some really well-timed strikes. I can't remember much about round four, if I'm being honest, but, uh, yeah, round four uh, is a very, very close round. Much like the entire fight has been up until this point, I should point out, uh, even though I haven't really made it seem like that. But, yeah, uh, Davison manages to outland Brandon a lot in round four. Lands some really good shots, rocks him. With something, I want to say, at the midpoint of the round. He does get a good trip on him with a leg kick as well. And doesn't uh, immediately follow up on it. And he does go for a couple of takedowns. Brandon's defense is a lot better in rounds four with the takedowns. Uh, I wish I could remember more. But I will say, I think Davison wins round four. He's, like, not as much happened in round four. But Davison managed to get the better of most of the exchanges. He was trying to avoid many wild brawls. And even in a situation where he was almost caught with a lot of good stuff, he was using really great head movement to avoid being hit too much, so he managed to cancel really well. And he did get a good couple of hits in on Brandon, especially in terms of like the leg kicks, and some really good punches too. Um, I just wish I could remember more about round four, but it was a really good round, it was a really fun round, and I, yeah, it does go to figure out, so it's like 2-2 going into round five. And round five starts interestingly enough with Brandon actually getting a takedown on Davison uh which I thought was interesting th thought was interesting because you know up until this point Davison had mostly been the instigator of that however a lot of the advice that Davison was getting in his corner was that they felt he had won the round on points so they their advice to him was basically just just to drag the last five minutes out until the very end and there's not much action that happens um, until, like, the midway point. Like, they're both standing, facing each other, you know, giving some smiles, giving some drugs, throwing some feints. Eventually, Bra uh, Davidson, excuse me, actually lands something. He's opening up with some really heavy shots that almost knock Brandon down. And he sort of gets him on the ground for a little bit, but Brandon is able to get up really quick. And, I mean, Davidson was able to get up at the takedown at the start of the round fairly easily. And then, you know... Uh, Brandon is landing some good counters. He lands a really good counter right of his own, but he definitely got the worst of it. And then we get to the end of the round, and that's when another exchange happens. There's nothing like else really between. There's nothing else really in between. And Brandon is in the middle of another really uh, big exchange. He does land against Figueredo, and oh, I just remembered why uh, the thing I forgot to mention about the end of round four. So yeah, there was another sort of like situation where I think. Davison had Brandon in a submission sort of thing, 
and Brandon actually pushed Davison away. So, now I've explained that, I can explain the end of the fight. Uh, yeah, Figueredo started landing some big shots on Moreno again. And Moreno was just countering pretty decently, but uh, it was easy to see that Davison had gotten the better of it, even though Brandon's counters were really good. Again, round five difficult to call, but I am giving it slightly in favour of Davison because he was playing the smart game, I guess, even though Brandon got a really good takedown near the start of the round, so I guess I'll just go to the conclusion of the fight now. So, I will admit this fight was extremely entertaining, and I think it's an early placement for a top 10 fight. However, it it does suffer from petering out near the end of the fight. I, f I wish five... I wish... I wish round 5 had more action in it, and I wish, wish round 4 had more action that I could remember. But round 1 was great, round 2 was really solid, round 3 was really great. I've got no problems with the winner, um, even though I, th I, it is sad to see Brandon lose the title after just getting it. And I hope they run it back for a fourth fight. And, you know, I mean, it's one, one apiece. So it's one to Davison, one to Brandon, and a draw. Like, you know, it's basically a sort of Kenny Omega... Um, Kazuchika Okada sort of thing. Like, you know, 1-1-1. One, one, and one. They need a fourth one to sort of fully decide it, I think. And I would not complain about seeing that, considering that, um, you know, two of their fights, this and their first one, have gotten Fire the Night Awards for a reason. And their first one was one of my favourites of 2020. No doubt this will be one of my favourites of 2022. I loved all of the action in it. I loved how much fun these two were having. Cray reaction was great as well. Can we just do this all the time? Please, can we get full crowds? Always, please. Thank you, Dana. You're not, you're not fucking watching these, but please, can we get full crowds in for fighting nights and things like that? But that's besides the point. Also, if you hear that weird rumbling noise, that's my cat sleeping. I don't know who's sleeping through me talking, but yeah. Absolutely recommend you check this fight out for yourself. I thought it was phenomenal. Definitely a top 10, maybe top 5 worthy contender this early in the year. We've still got 11 more months to go. And a fight of the night next week as well, possibly. Uh, so, yeah, that will about do it. Really, I don't have much else to say. Go check this fight out for yourself. It was a hell of a lot of fun. And I really would love to see a fourth between these two. And as for what's next from me... Uh, a vlog tomorrow explaining something I'm going to be doing about backtracking, basically to make it easier on my sanity. And then after that, the Go Home Show for Heat of the Moment. And then on Friday itself, well, actually sometime in between a Music of the Week episode, but on Friday, Heat of the Moment, which I'm really looking forward to doing. And that about goes for my schedule for the week. And as always, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye-bye.